Today on the Technivorous channel, we're taking a look at the all new Prusa Slicer 2.4 Alpha. So this version is not fully released yet. We're going to take a look at some of the new features and I don't think you'll be disappointed. So stay tuned. Here we are in the all new Alpha for Prusa Slicer 2.4.0 and as promised, we are going to take a look at some of the new features. Now there's some pretty exciting stuff in here. Before we jump too far into that, we're going to go over to the new features page and I want to take a look at a couple of things because there are a couple of things of note in this version. We are going to glaze over a lot of this because I'll be showing it to you personally. Uh, but I did want to find two sections in here. The first being the removal of here we go uh, negative volumes modifier and extruder overrider values so this is basically um, making it a lot easier it says here there was a similar way to remove pieces by setting the zero number of top bottom layers blah 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 um, basically they made this just a button all you have to do is click and it works we're gonna be checking that out in just a second the other thing I wanted to look at was this blurb right here so this is a thank you to Kira for staying open source they've ported the popular fuzzy skin feature from Kira into Prusa Slicer now the thing I want to point out about this is I really really appreciate these guys doing this um, and also thanking Kira Kira has been known to take a couple of things from them like their range algorithm and things like that so um, it's nice to see them competing but also willing to work with each other in order to make them better so that is really really cool we'll take a look at that as well um, some other stuff in here the last thing I wanted to show you in here, sorry about all the scrolling, is this one right here. This is sign mode. So from now on, it detects when it thinks you're printing a sign, and it'll ask you if you want to put uh, layer separation in there. So we're going to take a look at that as well. well. Let's jump over to Prusa Slicer and see what's good. All right, so first and foremost, the first thing I wanted to look at here, let's grab us an STL. I have several. We're going to grab a sign that I just made to test out this sign system. Now, here I have a flat file, and then I have two different height variations. So the technivorous text and the border are at 2 millimeters, and the 3D printing text is at 1 millimeter. So in theory, it should detect that. It should be able to tell that this is a sign. And it should ask us if we want to slice it separately. So um, let's click the slice button. And here it is. Here's our note. So let's apply auto color change to print and click yes. Okay, so now we're down at the bottom. If we scroll all the way up, we see that we have three different colors here. So it's going to give us two uh, M600 commands. You can see here. And that is going to manually stop the printer so we can change the filament and change the colors to finish our signs. So that is a really, really handy thing to have in there if you do a lot of sign or multicolor printing. And I really, really like that quick addition. So let's see what else we got. We're going to go back to the platter here and remove this guy. And I'm going to bring in another random file because we're just going to cut a hole in it. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to use this new feature. So uh, I have a bottom of a computer mouse here. And let's go ahead. Let's get a good view of it and we will grab it and we will click right here and I think we'll just say um, add negative volume and you can either choose a box, a cylinder, a sphere, or a slab in our case we're gonna load and we're gonna grab something a bit funky so let's see I have uh, I want something that's not regular let's do this should cut a bunch of pieces out of it so let, we'll grab this model, we'll drag it over here. If you remember, it's printing this as a negative volume, so all we need to do is make sure that it's going through the model at the bottom there. Slice this guy, and it should show several holes in the model and not show that second piece we brought in at all. And, and in fact, there you are. It's <clears throat> leaving outlines of all the models. Excuse me, sorry about that leaving outlines of all the models that we cut out. So you can do that with uh, simple models, complex models. It's actually really, really fast and a little bit simpler than Kira's version of doing things. So I'm very, very happy with that as well. Now, one of the other things we wanted to look at in here was fuzzy mode. So let's go ahead and add a modifier here. So let's go to add part. We're just going to load a sphere like they do in the preview of this on the page. And we're going to drag that over here. Add settings, fuzzy skin, 
fuzzy skin. Okay. Fuzzy skin. We actually need to make this a modifier. Okay, so uh, I think I did that right. We'll find out. So when I slice this, it should. Yeah, there you go. Um, so it's putting fuzzy skin on the area that's in contact. So right here, right where that sphere was touching. Pretty cool little trick for just fuzzitizing a part of it. It does also do the inside, something to be aware of. And yeah, that is pretty, pretty cool. Now there are a couple other additions in this version of Prusa Slicer that are worth a look. So I definitely recommend downloading the alpha and checking it out. But as with Kira, you always want to keep the old version if you're working with alpha or beta software and make sure that you're not overextending yourself or getting rid of something that you need. So the setup on Prusa Slicer, pretty much the same as always. There are a few new printer definitions in here. I was able to get the Artillery Genius up and running and my print quality is pretty spectacular. So um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope it was helpful to you. I'm looking forward to the full release of Prusa Slicer 2.4 and there are some new additions in here that are really, really handy. And it's important to note we didn't go over everything. There are some new uh, mesh fixing tools and things like that that are pretty easy to access as well. And I'm not sure if this is the final um, addition set before, I mean, they might add something else in the beta before they do the final release and they'll probably change a few things and, and take out a couple of bugs. But I love, love, love the new tools in this version, and I'm definitely recommending Prusa Slicer from now on. I am a big Kira fan for sure, um, but it seems like Prusa Slicer is going in the right direction with with a lot of these upgrades, and it's nice to see them working together. You know, I, I jump back and forth. Um, Prusa Slicer is one of those things where you can get a lot more settings out of it, but you have to be a lot more particular about making sure each setting is set right each time or that you're in the right filament or you're in the right printer um, because mistakes happen pretty easily here with all of the tons of settings they have. You can see if I go to expert mode, um, there's quite a bit of stuff. So we can click the settings. You can see all of these parameters in here. So if you're new to Prusa Slicer, definitely start off in simple mode and get used to it. Uh, but if you are a little bit more advanced and you like more settings than you can get from your Kira Slicer, definitely check out Advanced and Expert Mode in Prusa Slicer. You won't be disappointed. It is very, very well put together. And there's a lot of stuff that can give you a really good print if you know what setting to change. So we'll see you in the next one, guys. Don't forget to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Stick around guys, I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here and if you haven't already, subscribe, 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 make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one, Technivorous out.